Hi, welcome to another edition of Collection Reflection. I'm Jim Holmberg, Curator of Collections here at the Filson. And I'm standing next to the wonderful 1916 portrait of Otto A. Rother by J. Bernard Alberts, Jr. Otto Rother was a native of Indiana, born in 1871. He eventually settles in Louisville and gets hired by the Filson, at that time the Filson Club, uh, as the editor of the Filson Club History Quarterly and also as secretary of the club. Uh, keeping the minutes and doing a, a lot of that uh, secretarial duties uh, that an organization at that time, a thriving and growing organization had. Uh, he was also a historian and a collector, and he wrote books, he, he wrote articles for the quarterly, and in this uh, really wonderful portrait uh, by Alberts, you can see he's kind of uh, rather debonair looking there in his suit and everything. He's uh, relatively young still, probably, well, by then he would have been in his 40s, but uh, smoking what apparently was an ever-present cigarette. Uh, he uh, apparently smoked unfiltered Chesterfields, and, uh, and uh, people that have described meeting him in his office at the old Filson over on Breckenridge, street and other places that it was kind of a cloud of this cigarette smoke that seemed to, to be always around him. But it's a wonderful portrait by Alberts. Uh, John Bernard Alberts himself uh, was a very talented artist. And his story is really rather tragic. It wasn't long after this portrait, and we have three essentially life-size portraits painted in a four-year period by Alberts. All of them are a little bit different. So he was very, uh, very uh, talented uh, and, and kind of diverse in the way he could change his style up, depending upon either what he felt like doing or maybe what the subject wanted done. Uh, but this one, again, is painted in a, in a very popular style of the day. Alberts himself, when World War I for the U.S. Uh, started in 1917, uh, when the U.S. got involved, he uh, worked it out at Camp Zachary Taylor, uh, doing drawings for the Army, and the flu, of course, started raging in 1918, 1919, the Spanish flu, and he took an experimental vaccine for the flu and whether it gave it to him or some other cause, we don't really know for sure, but he ended up with chronic fatigue syndrome and was essentially bedridden for the rest of his life. He died in 1931, and uh, so he was not really all that old. And uh, so that's, a, that's a really tragic because a very, very talented artist uh, had his career and his life cut short by an illness. Uh, Rother goes on, he doesn't die until 1956, uh, and uh, served the Filson very well as both editor and, uh, and uh, secretary for, for many years. Uh, Tom Clark, Dr. Tom Clark, the Dean of, of Kentucky Historians, uh, used to tell a great story about as a young historian, newly hired at UK, University of Kentucky. Uh, he came over to the Filson and, and met with, with Rother up in his office. And then he said when the meeting was done, uh, he, uh, Rother put him through his paces as an editor and, and what he should do and this and that. And he said he was a, really a wonderful mentor to these young historians in the state. Uh, Clark went downstairs just to wrap up a couple of things and he said it wasn't hardly any time at all and he left and started walking over towards the Louisville Free Public Library there at 3rd New York, uh, which is, was only a few blocks away from the Filson at that time. And he said, who should be coming the other direction but Otto Rother? And uh, the young uh, mentees of his and everything very fondly called him Uncle Otto. And he said, here comes Uncle Otto marching the other way, Chesterfield in hand, and he said, I never could figure out how in the world he got out of the building to where he was going 
and it was on his way back that quickly. So it was just a wonderful little anecdote about Uncle Otto that Tom Clark, the great Kentucky historian, would tell. Now I'm talking about historians and, and Rothard and what he did. And we have here the Outlaws of Cave-In Rock and A History of Muhlenberg County. These are two of the, of the best books that, that Rothard wrote. Uh, the Outlaws of Cave and Rock, about the infamous outlaws and river pirates that hung out uh, there on the lower Ohio in what is now Illinois. And, uh, and then the history of Muhlenberg County, still today, is considered the model of how to do a county history. So he was very diverse even in, in how he could do things. And then, as as editor of the Filson Club History Quarterly, uh, he really made it a, a very well-established, well-respected journal. And he started a series that we actually still to do, do today called Browsing in Our Archives. And that's something in our news magazine, the Filson, that we still do today. We, uh, when that magazine started now almost 20 years ago, we, uh, thought, you know, what a wonderful idea and kind of tribute to bring back a series that Rother did way back in the day, highlighting items in our collection. And so uh, we owe a lot to the talent and the scholarship and the leadership of Otto Rother and other early leaders of the Filson. I hope you'll enjoy, you'll, you enjoy this and you'll join us again for another edition of Collection Reflections.